Hello everybody, it's Mardax here and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about Titan Grail, the fall of Avalon. I played the demo, even if currently when you watch this you can jump to the description, there will be a link and you can fully play the game. But this is my first impression about the title and to be honest I'm quite shocked how the game looks quite promising. It looks like a upgraded Skyrim to be honest. Still, few things are not on the highest level, but they are good. So okay, let's talk what this game is about. And it's about the story based on Legend of King Arthur, but game story took the place 600 years after the legends and around the world there's a disease called Red Death. From what I understand, with combination of some magical whatever stuff, it can combine people or transfer them into zombies and plague is taking over around the world. The only enemies you're gonna find in the demo is only zombies and uh, priests or cultists. But in, for example, Steam page, you can check a few screens or small the gifts where you can find much more different creatures to battle and probably there is much more to come in this fantastic open world RPG. First, after creating your character, you have to, well, start like in Skyrim or Oblivion or Morrowind in the jail cell where the guard is talking to you and he asks you questions and these questions are reference to your past, which indicates what buffs or bonuses you have to your stats in overall. Like using one hand sword, two hand swords, heavy armor, light armor, using bows and magic. Because of course it's a fantastic game, so there will be a magic too. But unfortunately you can only choose like few options where you are going to the, for example, army, or you are an archer, or you are a thief, or you are a magician, and choosing the army indicates that you're gonna have buffs for one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, shields and heavy armor. So it's not that easy to combine or create specifically what you like to your character to be. Anyways, after short talk, something happens and another character appears on the screen, kills the guard and lets you out, requesting you to follow him if you wanna uncover the truth. But he doesn't force you to just go after him so you can like move freely, check uh, barrels or items in the shelves and other stuff. And of course, engaging your first combat, you're gonna quickly meet your first enemy, what's of course gonna be a zombie. And this is a funny thing because zombie, just by its force, breaks the metal door of the sail and then he attacks you damage you with like, I don't know, like small portion of damage, so your character probably is like a, <laughs> well, uh, like Hulk or I don't know, Wolverine or whatever the character it is, because if somebody with like kick destroyed the metal doors, probably with kicking me, he would kill me <laughs> instantly. But I understand that it was for making an impact or like a little bit, let's say, jump scare that I fall into. Because I was hyper focused, and of course, if something happens like this, I was like a little bit scared or shocked more. But it was funny. The combat is quite interesting because even if the game isn't like a very smooth or completely polished, the dynamic of the fighting is quite interesting. I find it quite funny. I like how you perform the damage, perform the attacks, how you can easily block. Because many times I was able to parry without a problem, so the parry window is quite huge because I'm not the best parry player, it here was visible and quite easy for me to do it. Parrying also, like in many titles, brings you benefits, because once you, of course, block the attack with the powering, you're gonna deflect it and reduce the stamina of an enemy. Once the enemy drops the stamina to zero, they're gonna go to the stagger phase, and then you can just, for example, hold your powerful attack and smash them, dealing a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage! Anyways, it's like a typical open RPG title where you are just go from place to place. Like in Skyrim, for example, or Fallout titles. It's very similar to Bethesda for some reasons. Or maybe this is my imagination. But anyways, the game performs quite funny and worked quite well and I like it. It doesn't break the standards of the, this type of titles, but because of that, that the game is quite similar to that, like for example Skyrim, it's really easy for a player to get used to the world and the rules of the world. 
even if the creators in the Steam page indicate that this is not triple A title, so don't expect entire game to be fully polished and everything should be uh, like on the higher standards. Still, it's 2024 and the title itself on just use it the engine, it's much better, for example, than just Skyrim. And I understand that I'm comparing game from 2011 to the new game from 2024, but by playing it, just when you look on the screen how the game looks, how the many things in the game works, it's quite similar. So probably developers used it as a, some kind of reference. And of course, by using different type of skills, attacks, moves, you get points to your stats. If you are often running, then your agility gonna goes up quicker. The same go for the fighting or going to stealth mode and being good assassin. What's cool is that you can use your inner magic or like a special ability, which is not exactly explained what it is, to slow time around you. So it will be much easier for you to perform, for example, powerful blow or avoid attacks of dangerous enemies. I think this is a quite tactical and funny thing to use. It makes battling few enemies at once easier, but using it is just, well, fun. Anyways, like in similar games, you are quite a chosen one character that has some kind of mission to do. So the mysterious character that helps you get out from being locked in the prison, but not only you, but also two different characters, and the entire team is combined in order to kill 600 years old King Arthur. And the demo ends on it, but of course, if we're gonna take a look on the, how the game looks, how the game behaves, you can be pretty sure that with the few things polishing up, it will be a really good title and fun to play it for many hours. Besides everything I said, I have a good feeling about this title. Of course, even if the world isn't on the newest engine and with the newest uh, assets and technologies, still the game looks great and functional. UI is small, but doesn't take up the space and you quickly will find information you need. Like for example, where is the health, where is the stamina and where is the mana. And also if you can use your special ability or not. The world is created in a very atmospheric way. And of course you can get fully immersed in this dark fantasy world. The same goes for the music. Here we have ambience that creates a good climate. So after my first impression, I think the game really has a potential to be a really good one. Like often I play the games with the potential and I understand that if you are, for example, watching my 20 videos in a row, I often talk about the uniques and potential titles because I'm trying to find in this game something unique and interesting. Of course, not everybody have to like it, but I think I will gonna play it and probably gonna have a fun. Well, it's also a Polish game made by Polish team. So I'm gonna be a patriotic and I'm gonna play it anyways. So if you like Skyrim, and I do, this is the Skyrim 2.0, so I would love to have a fan of it. If you are enjoying this title and what you are seeing, then go to the description, there will be a link, you can click it, go to the Steam page, buy the game, add to the wishlist and more and more and more. And as for me, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I hope you're gonna see each other in the next video. And see ya!